So welcome back everyone. As you can see we have the training basket, training tools basket here. Oh, which can only mean one thing. Um, that we're gonna be taking these guys here for their first training toss uh, which this video is gonna be mainly about uh, anyways I released my loft here uh, as you guys know this is my loft they fly by far the best so they started ranging about a week ago so I think it's about time to try take them for the first training toss which I'm gonna we usually release them at the back of the street for the first time but I'm gonna take them a little bit further uh, just because they ranged uh, yeah I'm going to take them about two kilometers or something maybe it's three kilometers but yeah two are still flying here they didn't want to come inside so I'm probably not gonna take them for some reason they all of them usually come inside very well just like the rest of them did but uh, yeah for some reason the, these two didn't I think I'm gonna have time to cut down on feed even more so they listen better oh yeah and the reason i wanted to take them on the training toss um, you can tell we have one wet dropping right there and one there the rest of them is doing very good but yeah if you look over here this loft has quite a lot of wet droppings and so does the second round birds a loft Unfortunately, the second round started to have uh, a little bit of adenovirus or young bird disease. As you can tell, those are basically all wet. But yeah, these guys started with it and then uh, these guys took it over. And then I think my loft is going to get it now, which I'm going to, I don't, I want to take them on their first training toss before that happens. So. I think they'll get it this weekend or next week, which isn't the worst. Uh, the other lofts don't have it very bad either. It just it will stop them from fly flying as good as they were uh, for a few days, which you can easily rebuild. But uh, I wanted to training toss them before that. But yeah, let's have a little uh, countdown: seven, nine. Uh, 14, yeah, so, or no, 13, let me just count again, there's 7 on the floor, 3 there, 3 there, and then 2 still flying, okay, so 15, that's, uh, that's right, so I'm gonna take these 13, because the R2 don't, don't want to come inside, uh, so yeah, I'll grab them now, so yeah, as you can see, the loft is all empty, all 13 birds are out here. Uh, let me just open this up again so when they arrive home they can actually go inside but yeah as you can see their first time being in a basket a shame the other two don't I guess they're actually gone they're actually arranging which is good probably gonna go farther than I'm taking these but doesn't really matter uh, oh yeah and a lot of guys asked about 611 why we don't breed out of them uh, if you notice the, the breeding videos that we made we do breed out of them we breed out of every single widower uh, one round oh here's one and then out of 611 we breed two rounds and then we take the eggs and put them under a foster couple but yeah there should be some uh, 611 siblings in here or I have one I think I should check uh, which number it is but yeah and then the second round also has two I hope it's not one of those three birds that I lost uh, two weeks ago but I'm not sure uh, it wasn't a white tip one because I know I lost two white tip ones and then uh, I think I have a regular blue or a light pencil out of 611. Uh, I should should check, but you know, yeah, one of the, those two birds still flying are blue bars, so might as well be him or her. I don't know. 
but yeah, I will be taking these uh, about two kilometers here now. I have to deliver some homemade windows here that I made uh, in that direction, so might as well put them in the trailer, why not? But yeah, uh, I'm gonna take them in there now and then release them. So we arrive at the location here in this nice field. I'm gonna have to lift them up because the grass is a little bit long. But yeah, there we go. Hello, you can go. There it goes. Oops, that's the wrong direction, but that's better. See, there's a loft as well, where I'm looking at now. Let's get back. Looks like they did go in the right direction. I used to always release them right there, but the dude put a gate, so you can't anymore. Those people really do have a lot of pigeons as well. There's actually somewhere right there. But yeah, I have to do something about the windows because they're not really very secure. Anyway, so all in all, I've been gone for about a little bit over an hour. And I just uh, when I arrived, I saw them sitting on the ground. So they obviously made it home because they're here. I'll do a countdown here soon, but I don't think, I don't like them to sit on the floor really at all. But yeah, I was gone, so I couldn't really do anything about it. Let me just grab the feed that's sitting there. So yeah, it looks like most of them made it home. So we got um, nine sitting on the, or no, eight sitting on the floor, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then I'm still missing three. That's probably the one sitting outside. So I'm, oh yeah, there's a light grizzle just came in, so I'm still missing two. I don't even think the, the ones I left at home are in here, I'm not sure. I have quite a lot of blue bars, so it's hard to tell. Yeah, as far as I can see, I have 13, so I'll have, a, have to have a look at the outside here again. Like I said, they have been having a little bit of trouble uh, coming in. So yeah, that's uh, one of those blue bars, I think. Uh, that has the trouble. And I'm probably still missing one. Maybe from the toss, or maybe maybe sitting in the trees, or no, there's one sitting on the greenhouse. Yeah, that's. I think that's still those two blue, two blues that I didn't take on the toss. They just didn't want to come inside. Uh, that's gonna be a problem. I don't. Uh, I like my pigeons to listen very well. So yeah, it's gonna be a problem. I'm not gonna give them feed, obviously. But yeah, looks like uh, we didn't lose a single one. Which is quite unusual for their first toss. I, I, I took them about three kilometers or like two and a half. So yeah, we usually go in a little bit smaller steps because they don't range. But these ones did and uh, you know, looks like it worked out quite well. With grabbing them 
uh, putting them in the basket you could really feel uh, how some birds are built uh, the, the fighter right there the big chick uh, obviously a cock bird those feel very nice uh, probably the biggest bird on this loft uh, closely followed by the grizzle right there but I don't even think the grizzle is a cock bird to be honest our grizzle strain is just also always very large so you know but yeah the small uh, small black one right here is also quite nice I believe that might be Paul Sturk's blood in it I'm not sure but yeah we do also have 611's blood in here I don't know why you guys thought that we didn't breed out of him, but we, we do. And we also have uh, 611's exact parents still. We uh, leave them, you know, whenever you breed a good bird like 611, you don't want to switch things up. So we still have the same uh, parents, which we also breed uh, two rounds out of each year, which hasn't led to hasn't led to a, a bird as good as 611 but you know and we got a little death match looks like I got quite a lot of cock birds on here the white grizzle is probably a hen and the other one as well I think that blue bar is a cock bird as well uh, not so sure about that guy the white flight is definitely a hen yeah, the, the little uh, melee right there with pencil melee, also a hen. Yeah, I'm not so sure. I think I got quite a lot of cock birds in here. I think those two ones sitting outside are, are hens as well. I'm pretty sure that those two are actually the same ones uh, that were outside before. Like the ones that we didn't take on a toss. No, guess it was just uh, the reflection. There's only one sitting here, as far as I can see. Oh, left the door open. So we might have lost one uh, one bird. If the other one uh, isn't sitting in a tree somewhere, which he did want to do before before I left, so I'm not quite sure. They're also not, not very hungry, they're, as I said, they're starting to get a little bit sick, which I don't like at all. It's gonna set us back uh, quite some, quite a few days. Hopefully it's not gonna be too bad. Uh, but yeah, that's the feed that we're using. As I said again, I'm gonna lighten it up just a tad bit more with this feed here. When I really start to race, I'm gonna lighten it up even more, which is also a little bit easier to keep the pigeons healthy, I think. But yeah, anyways, uh, I'm gonna end the video here, you guys. All in all, a very, very successful toss. Um, we usually lose a lot more birds, so yeah. Yeah, the other first round, my dad's first round, doesn't isn't ready at all yet to be tossed, especially now that they're sick. So. Yeah, we'll probably do a, a toss once I got I got all 15 birds back, or maybe 14 now that's one uh, maybe lost or sitting in the trees, I don't know. But yeah, uh, I will do a toss probably in a few days, maybe the same one, maybe a little bit further, we'll see. Anyways, uh, have a great day.